Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Matt Report. I'm your host, Matt, and I interview folks who are WordPress entrepreneurs, folks that are running a WordPress business, freelancers, developers, designers, marketers, anyone who's touching WordPress and making a living off of it and running a business. I'd like to interview them so they can share their story with us. Uh, if you uh, haven't signed up yet, go to mattreport.com slash subscribe. Join the mailing list. Uh, you'll be the first to know when a new uh, episode comes out. And today, delighted to have Corey Miller on, founder of iThemes. Corey, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Matt. Uh, so let's hop right into it. I learned uh, my lesson. Those folks that are following me, a lot of WordPress developers and designers, they know I'm starting out on this and they're looking for my, they're always pointing out my little faults when I'm interviewing. So uh, <laughs> I want to jump right into it. And I uh, used to ask the journey of WordPress, but that went a little too deep. So let's pretend we're in the two-minute warning uh, elevator pitch. How did you jump in? How did you find WordPress? And when did you know that I'm going to make a scale of full growth business from this? So uh, I've had my personal website since 1998, if you can believe that. And uh, I was a humor. I was writing a humor column for a newspaper I was working at. And so I've had my site since that time, but probably around 2006, I think, is when I thought, hey, I need a better way to cobble together this site than um, just Claire's Homeworks, if anybody in the crowd remembers that. Claire's Homeworks on the Mac is how I was bundling, somehow hacking my site together. And so in 2006, started a blog uh, in my professional kind of arena at that time. I was not a web designer. Uh, I just wanted to blog, just share what I had learned and so um, in my profession to other people. So started blogging like crazy. I, at one point I was averaging about three three posts a day and wanted to be able to tweak my own site and um, I'm a learner. It's one of my top strengths in Clifton Strengths Finder thing, a Gallup based research tool. Uh, that's my top strength. So I was like, hey, I, I want to learn how to tweak uh, this thing called CSS and all this kind of stuff. And so I just, I was a hack. I'd start reading around and just messing up my own site. And uh, I released my first theme and uh, just because I wanted to learn and see what it was like because I thought it would be cool to do. And all this work started coming back and I had no idea that would even, someone would pay me for these terrible web skills that I had. And uh, so I did freelance freelancing for about a year before I started iThemes and probably... So what I would do is start, I would go to work from 8 to 5 at a desk job. I was a communications director. And then I'd come home and uh, work from like 6 till midnight or 1. And I quickly realized, I was in my 30s, I was like, I, my back hurts. I can't do this forever. I want, I've been, I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was uh, a teenager. And, uh, but I've got to figure, figure out a better way to do that. And so that's how the, you know, premium themes, uh, Brian Gardner, AD at Woo Themes now, had kind of been dabbling in that arena. I put something out there. It sucked. I knew I had to hire people that were better than me to do that. And so five years ago this month, I started full-time in WordPress. Wow. Well, happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let, me, let me ask you this question, and, and I wasn't prepared to ask this question, but do you think that the good times are over for folks like you and Brian Gardner, folks jumping into this, into this business? Do you think it's, you know, that opportunity of being the first to, to the gate is, is kind of gone or is there still room in this, in this market? I don't, I don't think anything's really over at all. Um, WordPress is just continuing to like, it's like, uh, it's, it's hit cruising altitude, but it's still going up. It's still going, you know, um, the the real I think question Matt is is it as is it as easy as it was to get into the field five years ago? Uh, no. Uh, now you got to be more creative. But every day for five years, literally since we started iThemes, I've seen a new competitor jump up. You know, take whatever adjective you want, put it in front of themes dot com. <laughs> That's every day of my life for yep. five years. Yep. Uh, so there's. There's still, I think, enormous opportunity, but it's going to be harder to find. You can't just put up a theme. You've got to think through the depth of the theme that you're trying to provide for someone. So definitely harder, but the you know the market continues to expand. Uh, for those that are innovative and creative and just driven to do the work it takes, there's opportunity there. It's just going to be harder to find than it was five years ago. Yeah. Um, so iThemes does themes, it does plugins, it also has a service section. It does a lot. 
where a lot of other premium theme companies don't, uh, you know, they don't get into, maybe they don't get into plugin development or, and they don't do any other extra services. Um, what's that like running that multi-prong attack where a lot of folks say you should focus on one thing and do it great, uh, but you're doing a, a multiple things doing them great as well. How, what, what's your take on that? I think to each his own. Um, every business is part of the DNA of the entrepreneur that starts it or the person that's leading it. So my good friend Jason Schuler and I are vastly different. Uh, we're some of the best friends in life are my, uh, you know, like Jason and Grant Griffiths at Headway Themes, and we're all different. Um, Jason is a fairly, for the most part, a one-man show. Um, so, you know, over the co- last couple of years, he's looked at us and probably thought, man, he just com- Corey complicates his life every day doing different stuff. And I've thought, I always want to parachute. I always want to diversify and have something ready for the next thing. Um, but to, to each his own, because I tremendously respect those like Jason who are so talented, he can run a one-man show. I'm just not that talented. Um, so all of the things you just mentioned are purposeful. They were, I thought, you know, in 2008, we'd start with themes and see where that went, try to prove the business model that we could make money, but that we would always be trying to serve the customer. Um, so our, our motto, our mission is make people's lives awesome. And that's three people. That's customers. That's our team. And that's the people that are part of the partnership at iThemes. And so if we do those three well, uh, we're going to have a great business. We're going to make our lives awesome because we're going to have work that we love to do, customers' lives awesome by continuing to say what are the solutions they need and let's, how can we fill those with software or training or services um, so we just kept doing that and um, you know sometimes it gets complicated sometimes we failed miserably uh, sometimes we realize why did we do this uh, we need to back out of it and do something else uh, but then we have some home runs like backup buddy if I didn't have that philosophy in mind we never would have started uh, the plug-in side of our business and Backup Buddy is our hit. It's our franchise. It's the majority of our revenue. Um, and it's just fun to be able to continue to you know, work in this office here in Oklahoma City with people I love, I care about, that love me, that care about us and our customers. And uh, so the best way to continue for me, long-term security, is to, to diversify. But to each his own, you know? Yeah, and that's a great answer. There's so many juicy things I want to get to. So uh, iThemes, iThemes as a company started with Themes back in 2008. Um, how many folks do you have uh, on the team now? I think our count is up to 24. Um, the bulk of our team is here in Oklahoma City, uh, but then we have um, distributed team members um, around the globe, literally. Uh, the, the Netherlands, India, Arkansas, uh, Washington, D.C., Mm-hmm. But the bulk of uh, our people are here in Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you can, take us back when you were when you were doing that freelance, when you were doing client services um, as your pro- as your primary business. Right when you were about to crest into getting into the digital product business and the theme business, what was that like? How many sleepless nights did you <laughs> did you have when you were? just waiting for that cash flow, that revenue to come in to say, I can finally say no to incoming projects and can you design me a pretty site to focusing on the digital product sales and that, and that scalable WordPress business. What was that like? What was that transition like? So I wasn't the 37 signals model. I wasn't doing service work full time. I was doing it part time still with a full time job. Um, and uh, like I you know, pointed out with Jason and Grant and some of these other people, um, I wasn't half as talented as they were from design development standpoint. So what I did was I had to know I had to be the best entrepreneur I could, the bu- business person I could. And I went out and found partners that helped me start the business to give me the funding to initially get you know, that first year going so that we could hire the right people to do all those wow. things. So I didn't have that t- traditional, you know, 37 signals is that love story that everybody talks about. <laughs> I was doing services, now I'm doing products and all that kind of stuff. Mine was, I had the vision for it, I wanted to get it done, but I needed some key tools that I didn't have personally to go do that. So you took uh, a more traditional or what I'll call a traditional, like uh, what we all see in the Valley, you went out and you've got, you got some seed funding, some startup yeah. cash. Um, and then you went out and you hired folks. Yep, absolutely. What we would—I I didn't know it five years ago, but it would 
yeah, seed funding, angel funding. I got we got a small amount of money, like I think it was twenty five thousand dollars, to basically give me enough uh, security to quit my job and to uh, prove the concept. So I worked my butt off day one, January one, two thousand eight. With that money going, okay, how do I make this last as long as I can? How do I make money? It was January 24th, uh, 2008, when we released the first theme in the theme store. And when I say we, it's really me. That was, I was the only really employee, quote, so to speak. Uh, so that, that's, that's how we got started. Not a very fun year, 2008, <laughs> because it was the fiscal collapse and the banking collapse. Um, so I'm sure there were some scary times ahead. How did you stretch? $25,000, not a lot of money to start up a business. Maybe so in the WordPress side of things, but how did you stretch that? Did you contractors that you found just on the forums, or how, how did you go about finding folks to help you in the beginning? You know, business is all about relationships, and um, so that previous time I built a name within WordPress. I built a lot of good relationships um, within WordPress, and so I was able to leverage some of that initially until we could say, Let's identify someone that can do this for us full time that would want to join the team. And um, it took about six months to hire our first employee. Then we went in next month, hired two, three, you know, down the road and just kind of kept snowballing that. Were, were, um, were, you, were you growing sales at the same time you're hiring employees? And, and that, was your, oh yeah. that was your proof? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we 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 philosophically believe that we built it organically over time. I mean, we had initial seed funding, uh, but just okay, we'd make ten thousand dollars. Okay, we'd make twenty. We'd make you know whatever it was, and then go. Okay, I feel good enough to say we can hire somebody and feel confident we could pay them ongoing. So a lot of that was was hunch. Mm -hmm. and by the way, you're talking about two thousand eight and being scary and everything. This is what's fun about entrepreneurship and being too dumb to know the difference. Oh yeah, I had no <laughs> idea. I had no idea. Uh, I just thought, saw my opportunity to punch my ticket, to punch my dream to do this. And uh, I, I tell people I was at the right time, at the right place, with the right partners. Um, you know, it, like you were asking earlier, if I would start today, it'd be super, super hard for it to take a lot more money uh, oh, to break into the field. Yeah. And so we, I saw an opportunity that I could not, you know, pass up, that I had to you know, quit my job, do this, or else I'd regret it when I was older. And I don't like to be, I don't want to be old. That's my, you know, my fear in life is regret. Getting to the end of my life and saying I didn't take a chance on something that was there, that had risk and uncertainty involved, and that's just life. That's waking up today, you know, is the risk of <laughs> making it to work or whatever. Um, I, I couldn't live with that fear of regret to say I wouldn't take that opportunity, but the, the stars aligned, so to speak. They intersected for me at that time, and I jumped on it. I, you know, I'd spent the previous 15 years of my professional career gearing up for something like this, mm -hmm. eating books, business books, gleaning wisdom from anybody that would share it with me to be able to – this is why I love doing things like this. I, I, I'm not the expert entrepreneur but I want to give back what I've learned in the last five years plus. So just trying to gear up for that opportunity when it came and I was like, oh, hey, I've got to jump on this thing and do it. Yeah, that's awesome. We started our business at the same time and um, more client services focused and it was one of those things where we just did it and we weren't even, we had our blinders on. We knew the economy was collapsing around us, but we just kept forging through and, and, and luckily uh, came out well on the other end, on the other side. Since you... Uh, weren't the typical entrepreneur uh, or VC raising VC funding and, and knowing what this was all like? What was it like when the when the business started to scale? Was it what what pressures did you hit with dealing with it, building a team, dealing with personalities, dealing with developers asking maybe for more money than you expected to pay, being distributed? Any lessons learned from the from the team and, and human side of things? That first year, and I described the entire experience of entrepreneurship as a roller coaster, up, down, up, down, up, down, side, 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 you know, um, strap in and just hang on. Um, but that, that's what makes it fun. It's not boring. <laughs> Every day is a new challenge. The biggest challenges in five years, maybe, maybe you're, maybe you're asking uh, for me looking back or in that first year, are always going to do with people. Um, so, again, if I use Jason Schuler as an example for him, supremely talented guy. His design aesthetic, his knowledge of code far surpasses mine. So I didn't even try to be there. Uh, but I had to hire someone with that type of skill set, and it's so hard. 
um, the the highest highs and the lowest lows in business have always been around people, because it's 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 emotional. It's I mean whatever anybody says, it's emotional. It's BS if somebody says. You can take emotion out of business, bull crap, because I know things about my team, and they know things about me that make it personal, and business and life is personal. So highs and lows are with people. When you have to say um, you're not the right fit for our team, and you have to cut ties with someone, that hurts. That sucks. I hate it. Worst part of my job. I wish I could eliminate it, but I can't. But the highest highs are seen in Matt Danner, our COO, our chief operating officer. He's 24 years old, and he leads a 24-person multi-million dollar company now. So, you know, seeing him go from a kid in college that I knew uh, to do sales emails for us initially, and now to be right-hand with me, walking side-by-side, leading the company is amazing. Brad Ulrich, our designer, three years ago plus, I knew him uh, as just this college kid. I thought he had he was just a good guy and had no idea he'd be one of the best designers I've ever, ever been around in my life. Seeing them develop is amazing. But the challenges are people. Anybody that thinks that, okay, money, you can set aside money for like an you know seed, angel money, whatever you call it, for a money, for, for a business or a startup. I don't think that's as risky as hiring people, working with people, because the surest thing, signs you think someone is going to work with you, from a partner to an employee to whatever, is going to be such a risk involved because you don't know what the dynamics going to be like of working elbow to elbow beside each other every single day. So people have been the hardest part of that. You know, marketing and strategies and all that kind of stuff, you can take chances on those if you've got the right people passionate about what they're doing who are kick-ass at what they do too. They are experts at their thing. I don't presume to be the uh, PHP develop- developer like Chris Jean, our CTO. I, I, I am – he doesn't presume to be a business person. He doesn't care about the lease on this office, uh, the HR policies, or he, you know, that's my job and that's Matt's job. We've got to be best at that. And when you know what your roles are, and you've got people that are just committed to doing something bigger and better than themselves, one of our quotes, Matt, is uh, that we we live by. It's an African proverb. Shut me down when, when I'm getting off on a tangent here, Matt. But is uh, if you want to go, I heard this a couple years ago at a conference. African proverb: If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I wasn't good enough to go fast by myself. There's a lot of solopreneurs, freelancers that are so awesome. They can do it by themselves. Um, but for me, I chose to pick a, recruit a band of people that wanted to go far together to do something bigger and better than themselves. And that way outlasts me or is way bigger than one person um, to do something epic so that when we are gray and old and wrinkly and sitting around a campfire or something, we can say we did something – awesome together that we could not have done apart that's that's amazing that's great that's that's an awesome insight what do you think the what's that one trait that you look for or is it not one trait that you look for in somebody joining the team that 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 keeps the glue together that glues everybody together with that same vision what do you what do you ask a a person joining the team or potentially (laughs) There's no uh, there's no rock stars at iThemes. There's no divas or rock stars, and that includes this guy. There's no there's no rock stars or divas. Uh, we've never been about that. We are a band of people, and although I might be on the front the front man of the band, the limelight's not on me. It should be on everybody in the organization that does good things. So there's no rock stars. So that what that means is someone that's willing to say I put aside ego to do something bigger and better for myself. So that team. Thing is hard. It's hard to look for threat in someone because they can tell you I'm all about team, but then only want the limelight and do things that are erode the team environment and you know aren't sitting there, you know, at s- midnight when some version of WordPress has dropped and it's broken everything, and just committed to helping our customers and stuff like that. So that team aspect of go far together. We've got a painted on the wall adjacent to my office here. Um, the other thing is drive. Um, that there's a fire, a drive and passion. I'll just blend those two. Drive and passion. Drive, p- passion about something, and that's what we're doing here. You have to believe. You have to commit and believe in what we're doing here. If you don't believe in that, and that doesn't go for our themes, that's any side, any job, any, any business. If you don't fundamentally believe in what they're doing, and I'm not just saying that you agree with it. I'm saying that you you are interested in it. You see how it changes the world um, for the better. 
um, that passion about the work that is being done collaboratively together to change the world. You have to believe in that. So that passion comes from that, and it demonstrates itself in in the the technology, the WordPress, uh, the the internet, all that kind of stuff. That that's kind of the passion we look for. The drive is the fire that says, "I will not stop." I, I will wait, lay awake at night because I love this so much. I care so much about what we're doing. I care so much about the person that works next to me, um, and, and I'm willing to do the work that's so hard just to get it done. Mm. Um, so those are things to look for, and it's so, so hard, Matt, because hiring is so difficult, But um, hiring and recruiting, but it's that quality person. I, I mentioned Matt. I mentioned Brad. Uh, all the people we've got here, there's this semblance that I can't really put a – thing of but I go that's somebody I want to spend time with that's a quality individual that resonates with my values that if I'm stuck on the road they're probably going to pull over and help me <laughs> and vice versa uh, so you know passion drive and commitment to a team concept and what we're doing together is huge yeah Sk- skills can be taught if you've got drive you can you can set somebody next to a Christian and they're going to they're going to ask questions they're going to try to get everything they can out of out of him or anybody else to to learn what they're doing if they've got those essential drive passion commitment those kind of types of things is it a balancing act to evaluate uh, th- these new em- these let's say a new employee comes in whether they be local to the local office or distributed do you have two different evaluation processes and how that works i mean if you if somebody distributed says i'm passionate and I'm, I'm encouraged to do this, but then three months down the line, 90 days, you're finding out that they're not, you know, they're, they're shutting down at whatever, I'll say five o'clock at night and, and heading out and you don't hear from them until the next morning or you don't hear from them at all during the weekend. How do you balance the distributed? Is this person passionate? And when do you say fire fast, hire slow with that kind of person? Yeah, so remote and in office, generally speaking from my experiences, are just fundamentally different. In office is you're committing to some semblance of a schedule, although we have flex time. You can come in from 7 a.m. to 10 10 a.m. and then, you know, adjust your schedule. We want everybody here between 2 and 4 central time. Uh, That's that's different. That's a different commitment. That's um, maybe some more green uh, people that haven't been in the workforce um, where, you know, working at home, working in a virtual remote environment, environment is is tough for someone that might not be as disciplined now i'm not saying our people here are extremely disciplined uh but it does take a a discipline and focus to be able to to work from home um our dev team historically has been located just here in oklahoma city we said there's collaboration that needs to happen that works better together when you can rub elbows versus you know trying to hit somebody on chat and stuff like that up until about last year when we hired Glenn Ansley from um, uh, he lives in North Carolina um, he's our first true remote um, well not our, not our first but our full-time remote dev now we have switched gears because it's hard to hire the type of people we need locally uh, and uh, he was a good test case for us uh, however Dustin who Bolton who um, uh, d- is the lead developer of Backup Buddy is technically remote However, his house his house is two miles south of the office, um, so we we we've all done that in the last year now, and because out of necessity, um, you know, Dustin works better when he can kind of control his environment, and he's got a different schedule from everybody. He's a night owl like most programmers, really. Uh, Glenn is you know a little bit different. Um, it just takes the right person. Um, you know, those guys obviously have an, an immense trust built within us to say we know what they're doing uh, but it's hard you know the first year we had we were for the most part remote of our business and we thought ah oh, just it just it's slow it didn't work you know we need collaboration um it's a it's a beast in itself uh chris uh lemma who chris com. i met him in phoenix a couple of months ago for the first time in person he he's been doing remote virtual team development since 1996 been good bouncing some things off of him um and then of course you got automatic right 100 plus people or whatever they're up to now they're all remote and they're they're like the only true company at that size that i mean there's nobody else maybe 37 signals i guess but i don't think they're even close to 100 people but that's just a different situation altogether it, it works differently for every business um, but it's just it's just hard because you know in office and I'm going to get off off on a tangent so you need to shut me down here in a second. <laughs> in office, 
I can go have a beer with anybody here, any you know, almost any night, right? Uh, I can get, we we you know go fill our coffee cups in the break room and can rub elbows. That's harder when Glenn's in North Carolina or Sridhar's in India. I can't have that personal touch, and that's it's 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 tough. It hurts, but it's the sacrifice they make and we make to say. We want. We wish Glenn and everybody remote would be right here in Oklahoma City because we could do some fun stuff together. It's just not how the business has turned out and the way the business needs to be able to grow. Yeah. One of the things I talk about with freelancers that are running their WordPress business, we talk about that discipline. We talk about what their daily routine is, how do they structure their time and things like that. And for the the new freelancer coming on, what we'll call like the, gradu- the person, the kid graduating uh, from college, uh, getting into this. Um, a lot of that is, Hey, I heard about automatic and these guys are and gals are, you know, working whenever they want and they don't have to show up and they don't have to do anything. <laughs> and boy, they, they, this is such a dream job. They don't actually work. But when it comes down to it, those guys are really busting them, their humps when they're working. Um, they just have that, that, that flexible, um, business model that works for them. Same thing with 37 signals. What was funny with that is a couple of years ago, if anybody was following 37 Signals, that's all they talked about. Distributed teams, virtual companies. You don't need this um, overhead of an office. But that was great when they were like 6 to 12 people. But now I think they are getting up there to like that 40. And as their business grew and scaled, so did their support. And I think that if you're not thinking of scale and support, you know, um, Inherently, you're going to grow, and now 37 Signals, of course, has their home base in Chicago, and they've built a new office, and they have training facilities now. So now their their jobs are requiring folks to be in uh, in the Chicago area. So it's interesting to see that early model, uh, and and as they grow and mature, then it's like, oh, okay, we kind of do have to bring it back to a home base. Here's the mistake I made is uh, Automatic has a great thing going and has built an organization that's completely remote. Uh, 37 Signals obviously being the poster child for, for remote um, and all that kind of stuff. I think that the, the danger and what happened with me was saying that we can be just like them. Mm-hmm. But there, there's only one automatic, there's only one 37 Signals, and there's only one iThemes. So for anybody to say, okay, you could do what iThemes does, no. It's everybody, it's, we're all different, we're all unique in DNA and how our business needs to be built. So it, change, it does change over time. I made the danger of saying, okay, well, you know, I read Rework. I love it. Bought into 95% of what I, what I read in it. However, you take those principles and you say, how could that work in our environment? Because our people are different. And that's, that's where it all comes down to. Uh, Matt and Tony and those guys at Automatic have built something extremely special there, but it's their story not ours. Now, I've asked, you know, Lance uh, Willett on the theme team and different people that I've I've known through uh, of Automatic, how does it work because I want to see what principles I can abstract out of that and then apply. For instance, they use P2 prolifically in Automatic. We use P2 uh, uh, our own version of P2 internally. Uh, but it doesn't work exactly like theirs does, and neither does, uh, you know, obviously any other company with virtual team members, right. uh, but to e- to each his own. And I think uh, it's good to. Ha- I love having those examples. But we've named two. <laughs> yeah. Whole, you know, where are the other ones? You know, out there, it's 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 a blend. It's like us. You yeah. know, we're a blend. Right. I I think that's that's the good. It's the good thing that there are those 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 other examples out there. The poster child uh, that we look at. Uh, but it's also dangerous for that up and coming entrepreneur because they think, well, I'm just going to do the same thing. You know, and and they did it. I'm going to do it that way, or they're putting out that product. I'm going to put out that same kind of product. So this is good. Now, tr- now you wanted to you wanted to hear some meat. Let me give you a confession on your thing. Uh, our team knows this, but not many people outside of iThemes knows this. I want to personally be remote. I want to be 100 percent remote. I want to work from my house. I want to work from our cabin in New Mexico. My my family's cabin in New Mexico. I want to be remote. But I work four days of the office in the office and one day remote. So that's my personal confession. But I make that you know sacrifice because that's the way our company needs to be built. So yeah. there's a confession for you on, on <laughs> this, this is a podcast. Break, breaking confession <laughs> that will be the headline. Yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. The and, and it's a perfect transition. And question I have for a lot of plugin developers and, and theme developers, designers coming out, and everybody does it. Their differences, and and you have folks that you're uh, that are in your alliance, if you will, that are comp- uh, competitors. But how do you deal with the 
uh, Backup Buddy being an awesome plugin uh, against WP Vault. Um, or yeah, WordPress Vault um, and Vault, Vault Press, Vault Press, sorry, and stuff that is coming from the mothership uh, of WordPress um, and kind of uh, you know touching upon the stuff that that we kind of do. We're, we're designers and and theme designers, and they're also launching themes. You're creating a backup plugin; they have a backup plugin. What happens when they do backup stuff with WordPress.com? That kind of thing. How, how do you? What's your thoughts on competitiveness within our own market? So some of my best friends in life are my competitors. Grant Griffiths is a theme competitor to ours. Headway is a theme, is what I would put in the same category as Builder. Uh, Jason Schuler has been doing themes. He's technically a competitor. Um, they're some of my best friends in life. They know things about me that a lot of people don't. You know, they're, but they're competitors. So I have a love hate, and I think entrepreneurs should have a love hate relationship with competition. I hate my competition. I want to kill them. I want to stuff them out. I want to be so good that their existence is zero, you know, uh, which is a challenge when you have friends that are competitors, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I try to limit who my friends are yeah. now. But uh, but so I hate it, right? Instinctively, I want to own it. I want to have the monopoly. All of us do. I mean, if we're really honest, we want to be the you know, have the monopoly. But I have to embrace it. Maybe I don't love it, but I, and I don't like it, but I have to embrace it because what it's done for me and us is make it force us make us to be better for our customers. If Vault Press, uh, Backup Buddy came out before Vault Press, if Vault Press didn't come out or whatever 500 other things that have come out since then didn't come out, we could have had the temptation to rest easy and not innovate. But Vault Press or whatever else comes out, it forces us to say, what are we doing to be better to serve our customers so that they stay with us and don't go elsewhere. So competition's good and sucks. Um, you know, good, it's good because it's going to force us to be innovative and creative and always serve our customers. It keeps us honest. Um, it's it sucks because you see people that you know essentially come into the space after you, and uh, but that's just life. You yeah. know, once you get over that and embrace it, and for what it is and what it can do for you, it's a very valuable thing in your tool set as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um- Again, you bring up a gr- another great thing to, to kind of transition to, and that's that customer support, that customer valuing the customer. Uh, you know, what's your, what's your model to go after, and how do you support your customers in a different way that maybe the competitors don't, uh, that gives you that leg up? I'm not sure about leg up. It's it's been our value. It's uh, it's always hard for me to compare myself to somebody else. I don't want to, you know, I, I try not to do that. I want to be the nice guy, right? Uh, but... So what we've just done is just say we want our customers to love us so much, to like us and to love us so much and what we're doing for them that if we went out of the business, they would be upset. They would be like, what happened? Um, you know, you get that kind of loyalty and commitment out of customers, which is such – it's an interesting thing, right, dynamic, because they pay you money to do something. And, but we've just tried to – all of our customers are real people. Some people, some customers aren't a fit for us. They're, they're just not a fit for us. and need to be shown that there's probably something better out there for them than us. But those that understand our model and what we're doing for them and how we're serving them, how we're making their lives awesome every day by providing great web design tools and training that enable them to go make money, to free up their lives, to do whatever they want, um, those are the ones that are going to stand by us every year and support us as we support them. So that's mine. I want them to like me and love me and I themes so much that they can't ever fathom a day without us. Um, and we do that just by serving them every single day, listening as best we can. And when we mess up, and we have messed up, and we will mess up, is say, we messed up, we're sorry, this is what we're doing to correct it and, and to move on. That's great. Uh, and that's going to transition to me into kind of how um, you and I, quote unquote, met is we do uh, a weekly web show here uh, called Press This and we, and we reviewed Backup Buddy. Um, and I think I had said something about or we had talked about, you know, it might be a little pricey uh, from the, f- the person who's just <laughs> starting out with backing, uh-huh. up their, backing up their site. And, you know, and you yeah. came on. Uh, you came on the in the comment section of YouTube and you said, oh, no, this this does cost a lot of money. 
uh, to, to develop and to design. Uh, therefore, you know, our cost is justified. Love that answer. It's the same answer I would give to somebody saying the same thing. Um, we, you know, we are, we are developing themes and designing themes as well for a very probably niche audience. And I know that, and this is kind of like breaking news here too, I a confession here as well. But awesome. A, a theme that, that we're, we sell a lot of, um, or excuse me, have not sold, sold a lot of our internal cost was, I think like 5,000 bucks to, to make the theme. Um, is that a fair cost? You think roughly for, for, for themes? Yeah. To uh, an internal cost. Is that average um, or what do you think about that? Uh, cost to do a theme. I'm going to internal, guess internal an, cost, internal cost. Um, you know, our, our standard themes probably take a week and a half. Probably right there is the average. Okay. Uh, what would be the cost of that? I'd have to think about that. Okay. In the early days, I'd be in 2008, 2009, I'd say absolutely five plus yeah. really. Um, man, I don't know. You stumped me on that one. Good, <laughs> That's a okay. good question, man. Yeah. That, uh, we do a lot of like track. We, we try to track and do averages and stuff like that with our operations, but that's not yeah. the point. The point is, uh, I totally understand the cost of developing these things and then on the flip side, selling them for cheap money, fractions of the cost. Um, yeah. So I, you know, totally understand uh, when your comment about here's how much it costs to do the backup buddy and this is why the price is justified. Totally get it. Recently, uh, and I will not name names, <laughs> that I won't do, uh, but I did buy a premium plug-in, nothing in your space, um, and I did ask for support and there was no support uh, for... Uh, the seven days, I got this auto response. I said I wouldn't be getting a, a response for seven days. So I said something to the effect of, boy, premium plug-in, no, res- no response for seven days. And it was it was 90 bucks. So it's a premium plug-in. It's a good cost, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not like a theme forest, 12 bucks kind of thing. Um, and the author responded with, well, pre- if you want immediate response, prepare to pay double next time. <laughs> so I was like, well... Number one, it's a terrible way to support your audience, your customers. And two, yeah. look, I understand that I'm not paying a lot, but in the terms of our ecosystem, 90 bucks, it's a good price. Sure. Um, Absolutely. Do you, and, and that was what I was going to transition into. Is is that 90 bucks a good price? I mean, what do you think the average person who doesn't know any of us or this ecosystem is willing to pay for things? For a, for a plug-in or a thing? Yeah. Uh, well, it's both. I mean, what, what do you think is... For either or. So, so for WordPress themes, people in WordPress by and large are willing to pay zero. <laughs> uh, now, there's a certain minority in a subset that say we're willing to do that. Uh, theme prices have just gone down. I mean, just it's it's getting really, really hard and tough. Uh, what would somebody pay for a theme? It's just hard. You, I look at elegant themes or something like that. Incre- I mean, very detailed design, stuff like that. A lot of work goes into those. And the price they're selling, and then I've seen the theme force ones, and I'm like, how do they do this? This must buy beer. Well, not an elegant themes, but I mean, some of these other ones that maybe theme force or something like that, it, it probably buys them some beer and some coffee, and I don't know. But it, it, that's a hard price we always said if it was below $25 now that was a couple of years ago i would say anything below 60 to 70 is hard to support at the level we believe it should be supported at that's for themes plugins are a different story e-commerce is going to be way high because that's a huge support tax that's going to be there's just so much there in e-commerce um gravity forms back backup buddy is you know, Gravity Forms Backup Buddy still have the same similar challenges dealing with hosting companies, shared hosting. So you're talking about, you know, we sold Backup Buddy when we first went out for $25. If one person, if, if you bought it for 25 bucks and you went and posted in the support form, we just lost money on that at $25. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Backup Buddy is 150 and I still think that's probably too low uh, for the support requests that we get and the issues we deal with versus themes. Um, if I can learn CSS, anybody can. <laughs> if, uh, but on the hosting side, when you're talking about thousands of different variations of hosting, it just escalates the cost. I, you know, I think plugins should be, t- generally speaking, um, over, you know, over $90, probably over $100, generally speaking. However, you know, in your case, 
So this guy was selling something at 90 and you had this expectation. Obviously, his expectation was different, but it didn't meet and caused the friction. You know, there's something there to be examined. Did he not do something that set your – did your expectation was set by other premium plugins that he didn't think was the same? You know, and that's that's hard because uh, we, we get those too, you know, where yeah. we're like, okay, we can't build your site for you. Exactly. We can show you where the CSS is. Exactly. So uh, I, I believe, though, you should be proud of your work, and the people that do good work should be paid appropriately. Mm-hmm. And so you pay for what you get, or you get what you pay for, right? So if you're going to pay, somebody's going to pay zero, like they did with my free themes, but demand support, you just paid for what, you know, you got what you paid for, which is nothing. Right. Um, (laughs) Right. You know, our premium, your premium stuff, our premium commercial stuff, whatever, should be, you know, if we're doing the right job, then we, we have, uh, we have a right to say we, we deserve that money. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions that I typically ask a, a freelancer or a designer, um, and this is something that uh, I do uh, a talk on at, in, in some WordCamps, is dealing with the $500 client um, and also being the $500 developer, right? So, uh, you know, I, I think what will happen is a lot of the, on the flip side, you have the, the clients who are looking for that $500 site, not just because that's all they have to afford, but that's all they're valuing it at right that's all they're valuing their web presence at and their marketing strategy and things like that web marketing strategy and then there's the flip side of the of the developer the newbie guy gal who's like i can get 500 bucks for this i can go pick up a free theme hack it up a little bit send it send it on its way and then not uh care for the customer going forward no support no thought into growing and scaling their business or taking care of WordPress plugins, updates, and backing it up, things like that. Um, your experience in, in what should we do as plugin developers and, and theme designers to, to elevate us as a marketplace and educate the clients? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, it's funny that from in the last five years, you know, we've had a vacation, some very highly trained um, people. Let's say uh, a, a doctor comes in, buys a eighty dollar theme, and is trying to to build their site and gets frustrated or whatever. And you're like, you know, I I want my doctor to have the expert expertise of years of medical school, and I want to pay them. I don't want to pay them cheaply to do that. I want to pay them what they are worth in the marketplace, what they think they're worth, and be reasonable about that. However, I don't want to pay, I don't want a coupon code for my doctor, you know. So I, I think it's about expertise and sharing that, um, you know, what all has gone into the work and just showing people. By and large, though, I believe if you provide value and showcase that through your sales page and your educational efforts and sales efforts to say, here's what this does and show value. Backup Buddy's $150. But for for the web designers and developers we talk to, if they saves them, if $150 saves them one hour at a time, one time, they paid for their, their backup buddy. So if we can illustrate that on the sales page, then they understand the value of it. Uh, now, if you get on the low end of the scale, somebody buying it for 75 bucks, uh, you know, might be a blogger. They don't understand the value because they, this is just a labor of love for them. That's a harder sell. But I believe in value and finding the right clients. And so I think it's about fit too. Value and finding the right clients that understand and value. We were just talking on our services side this week that our highest end clients have been the best. The one that have paid the most from our services side have been the best because they just say, here you go, build my site. And they don't want to micromanage. The ones that have come down at this $500 level you're talking about are the ones that want to micromanage and don't understand value. And I would say run. <laughs> you know, Those were clients I had in my first couple of months of freelancing and they helped me cut my teeth and educate me on how to work with customers and clients and stuff like that but as soon as I could say hey I'm off to the next adventure and increase my prices the better I was I lost less hair and it didn't grow as gray and all that kind of stuff so yeah was that Uh, an answer to your question yeah no 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 it definitely was uh you know it's funny uh that you say that the the one that comes down to that 500 bucks doesn't want to pay I mean it was uh brings me back to thinking of uh, our background is the automotive industry we used to own and operate a Chevy and Cadillac dealership in our local area for about 40 years my family and 
the Cadillac customers were the cheapest customers ever and they wanted everything done. Um, so it's interesting to see the flip uh, in this market versus coming from that market. The um, Cadillac? Yeah. The Cadillac customers? Yeah. I mean, this is, let's, wow. Uh, for anybody who knows uh, automobiles and in, in the car industry, this is pre Cadillac CTS and when the okay. CTS started to escalate and go really up against the BMW and, and the Mercedes. But that's when the Escalade was really hot back then. Um, so it's just interesting to see the to see the, uh, the differences. Um, I think you answered this before, but I'm going to ask it one more time. And this will be the, one of the last questions to kind of wrap up this segment. If you could go back in time one year, five years, or 10 years, what's the one ingredient or thing you would change um, if you had to do it all over again? Um, Business-wise, uh, we would have started plug-ins five years ago. Um, we would have laid out some really good plugins and and done that uh we we got into plugins t- technically in our second year um but really didn't amp it up until back at buddy in our third year so that's the business wise uh the story um five years looking back just this morning we were talking about our five year anniversary and our designer brad had some graphics he put together and it was like remember when and memory lane and all that kind of stuff I don't know if I change anything. Um, some very hurtful things, you know, have happened uh, that you know highs, lows with people, and all that kind of stuff. I just don't know if I changed. I would change anything because Matt of this thing is. I believe every day I've you know sought to do right by people, not their definition of right, my definition of right, because I want to be able to sleep well at night. So for five years, I've made my mistakes. You know, I haven't always done right every single day. However, um, the theme I believe I'm proud of is doing the right thing by people over five years. And that says I want to just enjoy uh, the people that we've come in contact, even the people that we are no longer with us. Um, I've ha- it's been nice to kind of make some repairs there in relationships and be able to be friends with those people again. And uh, But I don't know if I change anything. Uh, I think it happened the way it was. And uh, it's looking back and savoring that five years of uh, joy, pain, all that mixed in together. And then going the next five years is going to be great. Taking some of those lessons, of course, but just do right by people. Love what we're doing. Love our customers. And uh, it'll be a fun place to work. It's awesome. That's great. It's so I've been a, just listening to you talk about it. I can just imagine the whole <laughs> the whole journey and, and the pains and the pressure points and and the successes and the and the failures. It's um it's a fun ride and and as long as you can stick it out, uh, I think that's what our uh, us as entrepreneurs do best is we don't see the stuff collapsing <laughs> down around yeah. us until maybe we're buried under it. And I think even then we just keep going. Maybe we're like zombies. Uh, we just keep, <laughs> go, keep going into the wall until we can get through. Um, that's awesome. Uh, so a little segment called uh, what's in your toolbox. Uh, what, what type of software uh, besides WordPress or hardware or otherwise do you use to run your business? Like an Evernote, a Basecamp, a FreshBooks. I mean, what's your, what's your go-to piece of software or hardware? Mm, personally or business wise the, um, for the business yeah for the business let's say um, for the business you know it was great Chris Jean um, one of the most talented developers I've ever been around uh, when he when I said what do you need when we hired him he goes a, com- a PC computer and I was like hip up hooray because <laughs> PCs were way more cheaper than Mac <laughs> software wise um, it's been that uh, modified version of P2 we call it Project Press it's our internal communications th- channel uh, G Talk is, you know, the standard fare there. Um, and I'm trying to think, you know, we haven't had to go out and buy a lot of uh, software and things like that. I know some of the developers use Coda or some other different programs that might be paid, but we don't make that many, many software purchases um, beyond what WordPress can do for us uh, internally. So, golly, I'm sorry. That's a that's terrible right. answer, but I'm, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm thinking. That's okay. Let's, uh, let's hop into the, uh, the lightning round. We'll ask you a series of quick questions, and you'll have a series of uh, quick answers. Uh, this is going to be a tough one for you to answer, I think, but uh, without going to your own, what's the one plugin you can't live without? Gravity Forms. Nice. Uh, uh, favorite WordPress or business book? Anything by Lisa Sabin Wilson. Nice. Um, quote that you run or you live or run your business by? If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. 
the best <coughs> the best business or career advice you've ever received do what you love and you'll never work another day in your life um that's, that's great the uh the longest a client project has ever taken I had a three-month project when I was a freelancer before I started iThemes. That's not bad. The longest so far has been two years. <laughs> oh, ouch. Uh, if you had to switch to another content management system, what would it be and why? Woo, Matt, you're getting scandalous. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm interested in Drupal, but I don't know if I would say I would switch there. <clears throat> You could probably sell modules at like five thousand a piece. Yeah, to some university enterprise level. Uh, I say Tumblr. Um, huh. It's it. The simplicity of Tumblr has been interesting. Nice. Uh, who should I interview next? Jason Schiller. And what's the one question I didn't ask that I should have? When is my baby due? No. Oh, when is your baby due? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, our due date's February 5th. Our nice. first child, um, his name is going to be Callaway, and we're so excited, and I'm a proud dad, so that's my one question for you. Uh, we're, we're super excited. He'll be here in the next couple of weeks, so you think he's going to come earlier. Uh, so my wife and I were just chatting about that earlier. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, congratulations and best of I'll luck. Leave you, I'll, I'll leave you with this, Matt, and you know this because you've been in business for a long time, but after five years experiencing what we've been able to do and living the dreams I never thought were possible, but having the opportunity, but I'll tell you, it comes down to people, like we said, and when you're able to, I'm 36 years old, and uh, Callaway, having the opportunity to have a baby, uh, I just, there's nothing compares, so it's a mountaintop experience, but it all has to do with people, and when you see our team so excited about uh us having a baby, my wife and I, and all that kind of stuff, and sharing with that, I think that's the essence of life right there. Doing what you love, which we do every day, with the people you love, that's that's the key. That's an awesome, awesome way to close out the interview. I really appreciate that answer. The uh, Where can folks go and say thank you to you? Where can they check you out? What can they uh, plug away uh, your different services and, and places on the web? iThemes.com, um, you know, buying anything there always supports us and we love that. So we're real appreciative of that. And then I do entrepreneurship training at entrepreneurshiplab.net. It's my passion. Um, so I've got a good community over there going a little bit. It's just a little side project that my labor will love. That's awesome. All right. I want to thank you again, Corey, for doing this interview. This was awesome. So much great stuff in here. Uh, we flew through it, but um, I still think there's plenty of takeaway for the, for the folks watching. So again, thanks a lot. Everyone go say thank you to Corey. Check out his stuff on the web, on iThemes. Buy his products. They're great. We review them all the time. Thanks again, Corey. Thank you.